I guess the microphone works. Oh, it's turned on. Uh, well, welcome everybody. I'm Tom DiLorenzo. I'm an economics professor here at Loyola. And this is uh, part of my uh, Moral Foundations of Capitalism lecture series, uh, funded by the BB&T Foundation, which I always like to give thanks to. They're, they're our benefactors who allow us to do these things. Uh, our next, uh, our next uh, speaker, by the way, is next Wednesday. And it'll be Stephen Greenhut, who's a former editorial writer for the Orange County Register, who has written a book called uh, Plunder about public employee unions. It's a big topic uh, of discussion these days. So that's next Wednesday uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, of course, tonight we have the, uh, the economics editor of Barron's Magazine, Gene Epstein. Uh, he's going to talk about a subject related to his book, Econo Spinning. Uh, and which is for sale out front. We have our bookstore has some books out there, and, and I'm sure Gene will be glad to sign copies of any, uh, books that anyone uh, buys. And I also made some copies of his latest article from Barron's, which uh, came out on Saturday, and it's right for free, no charge, uh, at, the, at the table outside. And uh, Gene is a former senior economist at the New York Stock Exchange, and he's a graduate of Brandeis and the New School. And he's written several other books. Uh, one of them is ma uh, Making Money in Commodities. So uh, if you have questions about how to make money in commodities, I guess Gene is your, your man. And, uh, and, and after the talk, uh, we're, we have a reception, and we're going to have free food and drinks. Uh, uh, and uh, Gene will be around uh, to answer any questions uh, for a while afterwards. And uh, Gene is a frequent guest on CNN, Fox Business Network, CNBC. NPR and uh, BBC, British Broadcasting, and uh, he's going to talk to us tonight about some themes related to, uh, uh, I think he said uh, he has a combination of uh, crony capitalism uh, that he contrasts with capitalism, and I think he calls it crapitalism, is that right? And so uh, he's going to talk to us about the failures of crapitalism, uh, uh, and among other things. So uh, Gene Epstein, uh, uh, welcome. Well, it was a pleasure for my wife and me to tour Baltimore this afternoon uh, and to discover that there's far more charm to the city than we saw on the wire. Uh, it's a privilege to be hosted at Loyola this evening by Tom DiLorenzo, whose books on American history have been intellectual events in my life. Uh, the, uh, it, it is amazing how rife with the kind of spinning is uh, the subject of American history as conventionally written. We need more, uh, several more Tom DiLorenzo's to set that right. And of course, as a journalist, I do the first draft of history while the final draft has been done by Tom. In my book, Econo Spinning, I try to set right many of, uh, of the myths uh, of, uh, that have been perpetrated by the media about the economy through the year 2006. And uh, as you might imagine, I missed a lot of history since then. And uh, that's what I'm going to try to do this evening, uh, do an update of econo spinning and take on the vast subject of the housing boom and bust of the past few years, uh, which has still left the unemployment rate at nearly 9% uh, with misery rampant throughout the country. Um, who did it, what was responsible for it, how did it happen. Uh, I'm going to start, let me make sure this works. Uh, do I have this right? I don't. This is not responding, sorry. Uh, let me see. Uh, I'm pressing this button right? Yeah? Oh, nope. OK, yeah. Um, well, every talk should start with a joke. And uh, I was forced to choose a relatively grim joke that will help define this evening's theme, the classic Jewish telegram, start worrying, a letter to follow. Well, uh, we have a lot to worry about, uh, especially since the housing boom and bust has so been, been so poorly portrayed uh, by the media. Let me make sure again that I have it right. There we go. Uh, I'm going to begin with a brief quote from a bestseller on the subject of the recent meltdown. Uh, that's New York Times uh, journalist Andrew Ross Sorkin. The book had a good title, uh, Too Big to Fail. 
Uh, I'm quoting from it briefly here. At its core, Sorkin writes, Too Big to Fail is a chronicle of failure, a failure that brought the world to its knees and raised questions about the very nature of capitalism. Now, elsewhere in the book, Sorkin confesses that he's not a theoretician, uh, to say the least, he isn't, and that he's really going to tell in that book, in that, I think, the best-selling book on uh, this topic of the meltdown. It's really just a sort of a lurid, uh, quasi-fictional account of people coming and going and manipulating things without any sense of what really happened, of the underlying causes of what really happened. There's another author, uh, a little bit more obscure, uh, that's uh, Judge uh, Richard Posner, uh, a very prolific writer, aside from being an active federal judge on the bench. He called his book forthrightly, A Failure of Capitalism, uh, The Crisis of 08 and the Descent into Depression. Now, uh, if I were to write my book, it would be called, as Tom suggested, my own uh, neologism, A Failure of Capitalism, uh, capitalism is, of course, a contraction of crony capitalism, the unholy alliance between big business and government. Examples are agri agribusiness and the farm lobby, Wall Street and Washington. How this was a failure of capitalism, though, is an intriguing story, which I'm going to try to summarize. Now, I think there were three main factors involved in the meltdown. Uh, the first one I'm calling the enabling factor. Uh, the enabling factor was the central bank's negative interest rate policy from 2002 to 2005. I'll explain what I mean by that in a moment. Uh, the propelling factor was the U.S. government's housing policy beginning in 1992. And the subtlest and most difficult to, to understand precipitating factor, which was also very important, the replacement of mortgage bankers with casino capitalists. Let me start with the enabling factor. Uh, and I'm going to begin with a quote from Paul Krugman of the New York Times, who wrote a long article for the New York Times Magazine. Krugman, as you might uh, be aware, is a Nobel Prize winning economist. He had been the John Bates Clark Medal Award winner. Uh, I devoted more chapters in my book, Econospinning, to Krugman than to any other economist. Indeed, I could have devoted the entire book uh, to Krugman, uh, his, uh, his problems are legion. And by the way, I think he wasn't even so bad before he joined the New York Times. That's a story in itself. But here is Krugman uh, about the meltdown. It's called, How Did Economists Get It So Wrong? Very long essay. And this is his only reference to the role of the Federal Reserve in the entire long article. Macroeconomists were divided in their views, he writes, but the main division was between those who insisted that free market economies never go astray and those who believe that, that, uh, that economies may go astray now and then, but that any major deviations from the path of prosperity could and would be corrected by the all-powerful Fed. Talek's mind. Neither side was prepared to cope with an economy that went off the rails despite the Fed's best efforts. Now, this is Krugman talking about the debate. In my view, it's sort of like the Mensheviks versus the Bolsheviks. On the one side, we have those who think the free market economy can work, as though we have a free market economy. And the other side, those who believe that, uh, that, uh, that the all-powerful Fed can help it. But, and things only go off the rails despite the Fed's best efforts. It is impossible in Krugman's uh, worldview for the Fed ever to be part of the problem. It can only be part of the solution. Uh, and uh, th this is especially amazing in the tribute to his uh, hermetic view of what goes on in the world, because th the idea that the Fed had been responsible in a crucial way was rampant throughout the media. There, it, it was di being discussed by the mainstream. It wasn't just something at this point that the Austrian economists would make up, because, of course, the Austrians do believe uh, that Fed policy is, is at the root of business cycles. Uh, this was, it was almost as though we were all Austrians now because it was so, being so commonly discussed, but it escaped Krugman's purview. 